Imagine a mail messenger giving the mail message to the specific receiver. Prior to the delivery, there are processes being done so that the message will be received successfully by the receiver. In the human body, our nervous system is responsible in sending messages to the different parts of the body, assuring that they work efficiently. Hello my dear students! Welcome back again with another vlog! So this is me once again, Teacher Tin, your science teacher for today. So if you're new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 10! Hello my dear students! So another vlog, another lesson na naman tayo for today. So welcome to Science 10, Quarter 3, Module 3. And for this lesson, we're going to discuss about the nervous system. Alright, so in this vlog, we will provide you with information and simple activities that will help you understand how our nervous system works and coordinates with other body systems to maintain homeostasis. Alright, so before we proceed with our main discussion, so let us have the objectives of this vlog. So first, we will identify the major divisions and parts of the nervous system. Second, we will describe how the nervous system coordinates and regulates these feedback mechanisms to maintain homeostasis. So, are you ready? Alright, let's go! Alright, so let us define first nervous system. Nervous system is the control system of our body. And always remember that the nervous system, this is a complex network of nerves and cells that carry messages to and from the brain and the spinal cord to various parts of our body. It is also considered as the body storage center of information and also the body's control system. Kaya nga sa ating title, we have nervous system as the control system of the body. So parang yan yung kumokontrol, nagdidikta, at pinaka-driver ng ating katawan. Alright, so what is the main responsibility of our nervous system? So take note that it is responsible or it is mainly responsible for controlling and coordinating all the organ systems by sending messages from the brain through the nerve signals. And always remember, it also makes sure that all parts of the body are working together efficiently. And so, ganyan kahalaga ang ating nervous system. So, siyang nagdidikta ng mga bagay na ginagawa natin. Multimo pagkain, pagising sa umaga, so pagkuha mo ng cellphone. So again, ang nervous system natin, sila yung nagdidikta sa atin kung ano yung ginagawa natin, kung ano yung gagawin natin. Kasi sila nga ang control system of our body. Ultimo, pagising mo sa umaga, yung tipong kung bakit mo kinuha yung cellphone mo. Kasi dinigtay ng brain mo, nakunin yung cellphone mo. Bumangon ka, nilipit mo yung higaan mo. Yun ay dinigta rin ng iyong brain. At syempre, uh, through the nerve cells, so dinigta ng brain, so papunta yan sa kamay mo para kuhanin ang cellphone mo, para kunin, para ligpitin ang gamit, para tumayo. So everything was being dictated by our brain. Alright, so this time let us talk about the different major divisions and parts of our nervous system. There are two major divisions of the nervous system. The first one is what we call the central nervous system or yung tinatawag natin na CNS. And the other one is the peripheral nervous system or what we call the PNS. So let us define and differentiate the two. So the CNS, CNS or the central nervous system, so this serves as the main processing of the center of the nervous system and it is consists of two main components all right so the the first one is the brain and the second one is the spinal cord however sa pns or the peripheral nervous system so it connects the central nervous system to the organs and the limbs so pag-usapan muna natin ang tungkol sa cns or the central nervous system so just like what i told you it is the brain and the spinal cord what is brain of course, alam nyo na naman kung anong brain, di ba? Sa Tagalog, ito yung ating utak. 
ang sinasabi ko sa inyo na nagdidikta ng lahat ng bagay na ginagawa natin. The brain is an organ located within the skull that functions as organizer and distributor of information of the body. And of course, our brain has three parts. What are these? So, these are the cerebrum, cerebellum, and of course, the brain stem. So, makikita nyo dyan sa figure kung nasaan yung three parts na yun. So, the cerebrum, this is the large and the upper part of the brain that controls activity and thought. So, yun yung makikita nandito sa part na to. Ano, this is the cerebrum. Alright. And we have the cerebellum. Cerebellum is nandito sa my part na medyo baba. Ano po? So, this is the part under the cerebrum. Nasa ibaba lang siya ng cerebrum. That controls the posture, balance, and of course, coordination. And lastly, we have the brainstem. Of course, yung brainstem na doon naman siya sa parang, siya yung parang pinaka tube, ano po, yung pababa. Yan. So, this is the brainstem. It connects the brain to the spinal cord. Connectado yan sa spinal cord natin. And controls automatic functions such as breathing, yan, yung paghinga natin, digestion, kung paano natutunaw ang ating mga kinain sa ating chan, and of course, the heart rate, and the blood pressure. And another part of our CNS or the central nervous system is our spinal cord. Right, the spinal cord serves as a channel for signal between the brain and of course, the majority of the body parts and controls some simple muscu, uh, musculoskeletal reflexes even without the processing of the brain. So, yun yung makikita natin dito sa ating back part na yan. Ano po? So, that is our spinal cord. Now, let us talk about the peripheral nervous system. PNS, ano nga sabi natin sa PNS? This connects the central nervous system to the organs and the limbs. And of course, kung ang CNS ay mayroong two parts or two main divisions, so ang PNS mayroon din siyang two main divisions which is the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. So the somatic nervous system is associated with the voluntary control of the body movements and it has two main parts. So, what are the two main parts of the somatic nervous system? We have the spinal nerves and the cranial nerves. So, ano naman ang pagkakaiba ng spinal nerves and the cranial nerves? The spinal nerves, it carry motor and sensory signals between the spinal cord and the body. Kaya nga sa somatic nervous system, sabi natin, voluntary control. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung kaya natin kontrolin kung ano yung mga pwede natin gawin. Alright? So, and the cranial nerves naman, these are the nerve fibers that carry information into and out of the brain stem. Alright? So, how about the autonomic nervous system? So, kabalik na naman to ng somatic. Kung sa somatic, it's voluntary control of the body. So, sa autonomic naman, this is involuntary control. Ano? It is associated with the involuntary control of the body movements and of course it has two subdivisions we have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system sympathetic nervous system is activated when the body is in the dynamic role uh, in the dynamic role or stress or let's say for example kapag bumibilis yung takbo or tibok ng ating puso increased rate heart rate lalo na kapag kunwari nagtatakbo ka so, nag-jogging-jogging nag -jog ka exercise. So, hindi mo naman talaga makokontrol yung puso mo, ba So, dire-diretso lang yung pagtibok niyan. So, nag increase yung heart rate. And of course, the breathing and sometimes the dilation of our pupil. Ano po? Minsan parang kumigraw. Kaya huwag ganyan. And of course, sweating. Kaya mo po kontrol yung pawis mo. Hindi mo naman pa pwedeng kontrolin yan, ba Hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin, oh, ka magpawis. O kaya, sige, magpawis ka. <laughs> so, yun yung nasa autonomic nervous system. Sinatawag natin na involuntary. And the other subdivisions of autonomic nervous system is the what we call the parasympathetic nervous system which maintains body functions and restores the body to normal or relaxed mood. So, there are times na nare-relax tayo talaga. Syempre, it's because of the parasympathetic nervous system. Alright? So, again, ano nga ulit ang two divisions of the nervous system? So, we have the CNS and the PM PNS or the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. So, under the CNS, we have the brain and the spinal cord. And of course, for the peripheral, we have the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. Alright? Okay, so let us discuss 
now with the nerve cell. So, ano ba ang nerve cell? Nerve cell is the basic unit of the nervous system and of course, it is known as the neuron, right? So, alam nyo ba na there are million, no, there are billions of neurons in the body. Hindi thousand, hindi hundreds, hindi millions, but billions of neurons, alright? So, what you are seeing right now is the parts of the neuron. Makikita nyo dyan yung dendrite, the cell body, the myelin sheet, the swan cell, the axon terminal, the node of Ranvier, the axon, and the nucleus. Alright, so, alright, so the neuron has a cell body containing the nucleus, and in the cell body, there are root-like structures, yung parang ugat-ugat. So, ang tawag dyan ay dendrites at saka axons. So, yung dendrites, sila yung nagdadala, they are carrying the impulses towards the cell body, while the axon, sila naman yung nagbibitbit, nagdadala, they carry the impulses away from the body. Again, dendrites, sila yung nagdadala ng impulses toward papunta sa cell body. Pero yung axons, sila naman yung nagkikarry out, okay, away from the cell body. And we also have this term, synapses. So, these are the gap between the neurons. And here, in this figure, you can see the synapse between the two neurons. So, ito yan. Okay? Okay, so this time, let us talk about how the nervous system coordinates and regulates feedback mechanisms to them to maintain the homeostasis. Ano nga ba pag sinabi natin homeostasis? Alright, so homeostasis, yun yung para ma-maintain ng katawan natin para maging balance lang yung body temperature natin, blood pressure, pH, and glucose concentration. Alright, so did you know that the nervous system provides quick responses in maintaining the homeostasis? Kagaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, homeostasis is maintained in the body by regulating the body temperature, blood pressure, the pH, and the glucose concentration. Right, so the nervous system, not just the nervous system, but the endo together with the endocrine system, they are working together to maintain the body's homeostasis. And of course, homeostasis is the state rich when each part of the body function is in equilibrium. Ibig sabihin, balance na with other parts of our body. And this is attained, paano nga ba magiging balance? Paano natin makukuha yung homeostasis? So this is attained through the regulation of the bodily functions by the endocrine and the nervous system. So, dapat yung nervous system at saka endocrine system, lagi silang connected at lagi silang uh, well-coordinated. Alright? So, now, we have also this term, the feedback mechanism. So, what is feedback mechanism? Feedback mechanisms are used by most of body systems to maintain homeostasis. So, kapag yung ating brain ay naka-receive, nakatanggap na siya ng messages galing sa ating katawan about the, about an internal change in one of its system, so it works to restore the system to its normal state. And the hypothalamus affects the pituitary gland, which is also known as the master gland, to secrete the right hormones. The hormones will flow with the blood and reach the specific organs to restore the, the normal state of the body or homeostasis. Molecules of hormones are received by receptors of cells making this event a neuroendocrine coordination. The nerves that are found all over the body allows the nervous system to monitor homeostasis of the body. While the endocrine system helps by secreting hormones into the bloodstream and send them to specific organs. The levels of hormones in the body are controlled by feedback and it is important that the amount of hormones in our body is kept at the right level. And of course, para ma-achieve natin ang homeostasis, syempre, kagaya ng sinabi ko sa inyo, the nervous system and the endocrine system will work together, will work with each other to maintain the normal range of the many processes and substances of the body such as, ano-ano nga yung apat na yun na dapat ma-maintain nila? Of course, the temperature of the body. Another one is the amount of water in the body. Amount of metabolic waste in the cell. And of course, the blood calcium level. Right, so to review our discussion today, so let us discuss or let us answer the two guide questions here. What is the difference between the nervous system, central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system in terms of their functions and what might happen to the body if one part of the nervous system fails to carry out its functions properly. 
The central nervous system or the CNS, so the components is the brain in the spinal cord, for its function it acts as the control center of the body, processes, interprets, and integrates sensory information. It also sends out instructions to the body based on that information and of course, it is responsible for higher functions such as thinking, memory, emotion, and coordination. For the PNS or the peripheral nervous system, so its components are all the nerves and the ganglia outside the CNS. So what are the function of this? It connects the CNS to the rest of the body, carries sensory information from the body to the CNS, it transmits motor commands from the CNS to the body, and of course, it includes the autonomic nervous system which regulates involuntary processes like heartbeat and digestion, and the somatic nervous system which controls voluntary movements. For the second question, what might happen to the human body if one part of the nervous system fails to carry out its function properly? Of course, for the PNS or for the peripheral nervous system, it will damage. Uh, the sensory nerves can damage, can lead to numbness, tingling, or inability to sense pain, which increases the risk of injuries. For the motor nerves, of course, this function may result in muscle weakness, spasms, or paralysis. And for the autonomic nerves, issues can disrupt involuntary functions, leading to abnormal heart rate, blood pressure, digestion, or temperature regulation. And of course, for the CNS issues, when brain is not functioning well, it can lead to stroke, which can result in paralysis, speech difficulties, or cognitive impairments. Trauma or disease, conditions like traumatic brain injury, Parkinson's disease, or multiple sclerosis may lead to memory loss, motor dysfunction, or difficulty processing information. And of course, if spinal cord has been uh, injured, so it can cause partial or complete paralysis below the site or of injury. And of course, degenerative diseases may lead to loss of motor and sensory functions. Alright, so this is the end of our lesson vlog for today's video. And next, meron pa tayong module 4. So, abangan natin ang next lesson. So, if you have a new suggestion, topic that you want to discuss, just leave your comment below at gagawin natin yan, of course. Thank you nga pala sa ating mga subscribers, sa ating mga viewers, at sa mga students na patuloy na nanonood ng ating lesson vlog. Pasensya na kayo kung hindi, ka, hindi ako masyado nakakapag-upload, but I will make sure na sunod-sunod na ang video na i-upload natin dito sa ating channel. So again, this is me once again, Teacher Tin, your science teacher for today. So if you are new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 10. Thank you so much and have a good day. Bye!